Happy Sunday, everyone. And happy summer. It's oh, officially it's summer. Officially, yeah. It's officially summer. <laughs> yeah. No, you know what? I'll tell you what. I'm very happy with the way the weather's been. Do you it, want to show everyone your um, flip-flops? <laughs> flip-flop time. Flip-flop time, yes. And you were on a little vacay. <laughs> Had a little vacay. Nice. It was out of the country, but it was great. Yeah. I mean, vacation I saw, is vacation. Listen, I saw a beach. I saw a waterfall. I've seen pictures. That's it. That's all yeah. you need to know. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, I mean, I was just like living vicariously through you. Looked like an amazing time. What was the weather like in the U.S.? It was actually chilly. It I was? Mean, actually, like, legit chilly. I can't explain this but weather, guys. I don't like, know what's going on. It's summertime, and I got to tell you, I was actually wearing, we went out to get ice cream. Yeah. Perfect summer thing yeah. to do. It was cold. We, we had, not the ice cream, the, the yeah, temperature was like cold. That, we had right? sweatshirts on, hoodies on, it That's, was breezy, and uh, I'm like, is it really summertime? <laughs> Uh, I'll take it. I don't like sweating. Right. We've talked about this. Right. We talked about this Neither before. Neither do I. Yes. Fall is usually right. our time. Yesterday right? was hot and humid. Yeah. I don't know what today's weather is. Yeah. Usually I check the weather all the time, but if it's hot and humid, it's hard to get yourself out there. Yeah. You just start sweating, right? Yeah. And now you do outdoor work. Yes. Even during the summer? Yes. So are you summer, like... Summer, winter, doesn't matter. We're so either you... in, in jackets <laughs> or we're sweating. <laughs> Um, but we've been, listen, I'm, we've been super blessed. The weather has been really good. So yes. I'm trying not to jinx it. Listen, August comes, guys, and we know what's waiting for us in August, right? Yes. So let's yes. enjoy that, June. The feeling of you're walking out like, <laughs> yeah. And I'm not going, yeah. Yes. Yeah. But welcome um, back. I'm glad that you yes. had a great trip. God and, brought us through safely. And welcome to summer, guys. Because yes. it's officially summer now yes. as of the 21st. Yes. Next week um, is 4th of July. What? How is that possible? I don't even I'm understand. ready for some barbecue. <laughs> what do you do? You guys do fireworks? I, yeah. Somewhere okay. in our neighborhood. And, somebody's always yeah, somebody's got something. it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. You guys don't go to the store and get those little things and run around the I, yard like maniacs? Um, we might do that. I think okay. we have, like, our neighborhood does our little thing, yeah. I can picture yeah. Grace just really enjoying one of those sparklers that just, like, lights and shoots out all the little fun colors. We need to stuff. be very careful. <laughs> Guys, please be careful. That's yes, the message. Definitely. Our PSA for the day. Yes. Please be, be careful. Be careful when 4th of July comes. <laughs> yes. Um, so, as always, we've got plenty of things we've happening. We've got it, all... Lots. I mean, when does it ever stop, right? It doesn't, because we constantly have... This... I'm pretty excited about this, this, this one. Okay. You're not going to want to miss um, July 3rd. Yes. So day before July 4th. Yes. We Next have a Sunday. special guest speaker. Yes. Do you know him? I, yeah, I mean. I had the privilege of okay. hearing him speak before. Okay. And this was closer to, you know, when 9-11 happened. Okay. So Sujo John, he's actually going to be here. Yes. Um, he's a 9-11 survivor, has an amazing testimony, an amazing story. You know. I was going to say, don't mix his name with mine. Right. It's Sujo. It's Sujo John. and Sujo. Don't call me. <laughs> yes. Different. So, but different. yes. But, um, but amazing story. Yeah. And he and his wife also have a ministry, ministry. in India for, for women in, indus- yes. in India in, yes. who um, are involved in sex trafficking. Sex trafficking. It's a, it's a very impactful amazing. ministry. So, so don't miss. Powerful next story. Sunday. Powerful couple. Yeah. Yes. Definitely don't want to miss next yes. Sunday. Yes. And we have Serve Week. Yeah. This is something I feel like a little bit new, but I love the idea, and I hope that if you're listening, I hope you sign up. I hope you come in, and um, it's called Serve Week. It's the last, I believe it's the last week of July, almost yeah. the last week. It's yeah. July 25th through the 29th, yeah. and we have nine different projects happening. A Single moms, community, serving, um, and another one. But I just want you to know there's projects out there. It's all about us yeah. giving to the community, right? Yeah. Because that's what God has asked us to do. Yeah. So and, that is and, what we're going to do. <laughs> and Pastor Mark always talks about how we're constantly doing outreach yeah. and we're constantly involved in missions because um, we don't want to be part of a club. We're no, part of a church we're not. We're, we're not a club. Yes, we are, we are Christian Life Church. Yes. <laughs> um, so, th- so speaking of some of the big moves that are going on, yes. we have an incredible water baptism this week. Tell them. Tell them the number. 21 people. 21. 21. 21 people. That is the I angels mean, are singing. That's a big high five. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, Twenty-one people being baptized. Amen. And you can have uh, the the water baptism class. We actually have every, every second Wednesday, Wednesday. Mm-hmm. of the month, which yep. is going to be coming up um, July thirteenth. Yep. But you go there. You can do it as a family. But you must be eight years or older and believe that Jesus is your Savior. And Amen. it is. I'm telling you, what a moving experience. This is a public declaration that people are making. But twenty-one people. It's Praise just God. Um, amazing. Praise God. So we're very, very excited. Yes. Um, so that's going to be this yes. week. Yes, and, and then, then who knows? Maybe the next one will be. What are we doing next? What are we doing? What are we? What are we doing next? We are doing VBS. VBS. What? I okay. So it's going to be fun. There's going to be a wild <laughs> team of people 
up on stage. I'm not really sure who it is. Wait a minute. We have no idea. Possibly <laughs> that oh, young lady yes. right there. You don't um, want to miss it. We're going to have a good time. It's, it's always a, good a great time. time. It's always we a good time. We still need volunteers, though. We need volunteers, yeah, always guys. Need volunteers. Student volunteers, adult volunteers. If you can give one day, two days, five yeah. days, whatever you can give, yeah. we are so thankful if you can give that. Because again, we run on volunteers, right? Yeah. This cannot happen without volunteers. So we would love for you to come. We would love for you to for come sure. and just see what God is Absolutely. doing. Absolutely. Right? And then of course, I mean, the Friday night when you get to really see Friday showcase. all the stuff that goes on. <laughs> but man, I'm telling you, the volunteers, <clears throat> I don't think they get enough credit, so no. I'm just going to throw it out ahead of time. It's yes. going to give like a, a big time um, brag on yes. all of the volunteers because yes. there's so much happening, and there's so many kids, and there's so many different little classes and yes. pods of people moving around. Can't happen without the volunteers. Absolutely so, so VBS, not. please volunteer. Please sign up your children. Yes. It's going to be epic, man. Yes. It's going to be absolutely epic. Amen. Um, speaking of epic, uh, we also have CL school. CLA. Our this this school is incredible. Yeah, absolutely. We're up for best of bucks again, again, not only just once, but in multiple different categories. Yes. But we need your support. We need you to go and, and actually vote. So check out the, the Facebook page yes. um, or the Instagram page for CLA. Yes. And check out the link right there so you can vote. And I'm telling you, this is great. Our We're going to be best of bucks it, again. We're going to be best of bucks I mean, there's so again. many parents that yeah. come. Yes. And you know the quality yes. of the curriculum, of the teachers, the leadership, all of it. Yeah. I mean, they deserve to win, right? So if you want 100%. CLA to win, you've got to vote. Absolutely. That's just it. So, so don't, please yes. do that. CLA, yes. going to the top again. Best yes. of bucks. All yes. good. Um, what are we doing otherwise? Wednesday night services. Wednesday man. night Wednesday services. Night services. We've we got, just want to throw it out there. Yeah, we have stuff for the kids. We have stuff for the adults. We have so our prayer much. service. So um, much. Over at Fearless. Yes. We have. It's a hump day, right? Hump On day. Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> Andrew even says that. Yeah, He's like, it's hump day, mom. Yeah. yeah. And you just need a refreshing, yeah. right? And you're just like, oh, okay, another week, another yeah. week. Okay. Yeah. You know, still going to work, still, the you know, kids are off from vacation, but yeah. you know, it's still like just get through the week no matter yeah. what. It's good to be in church, even just for an hour, right? An hour, hour and a half. You just come. Yep. Oh, and actually, the, 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 the uh, speaking of fearless, they're doing their fundraiser car wash. So they did cool. it yesterday. Yeah, they did two. They did two locations, uh -huh. and I saw so many great pictures. It's really <laughs> looked like they had a, a blast. Um, fearless. And is if amazing. you want to help donate too, that would be really great too. Yeah. Even if it's after you know, it's after the fact. Mm -hmm. But the kids really need um, help with uh, raising some funds. Yes. Um, but so there's a lot of different things that you can do to get so involved. Much. We have our Explore CLC classes. Yeah. That's yes. one thing. Always that you can do. happening. Four week class. Um, you know, and then we also have new believers every Sunday. New believer, if you want to come, come join. Yeah, 10, uh, 10 a.m. on every Sunday. You can go down to the, the Family Life Center. Yep. And you can kind of meet some people that, that are part of the church. They can answer some questions for you, help yep. you through that first couple steps of getting involved in such a, a yes. big church that's yes. so active. And, yes. And, uh, we are active. Yeah. And in case you have not checked out our new website, highly recommend oh, yeah. you do. So much. Because it is really good yeah if there is anything you have a question about there it's just so much for you to do to yeah. serve to volunteer yeah, yeah. And, and I mean so there's a lot of questions we're obviously saying a whole bunch of things you see the announcements that happen at church but maybe you missed something and that's the best way to go is just always check out our website um, and you know, clconline.org and it's just a great way to stay connected know what's going on with our events yes. calendar, sign up. Sometimes even I see stuff and I'm like, oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, that's right. The we did talk thing. about that. Yes. And now, yeah. By the way, so. if you signed up for men's um, Bible study, it starts tomorrow. Yes, FYI. the men's Bible study. Yes. That's going to be wanted. epic. And that's actually going to be really foundational for so many of families. So many men. As, men. You know, men, men. Yeah, men being the, yes, the spiritual the leaders of the family. We're called to do that. And how do you do that if you love don't it. know how to do it? No, right? So it. it's a great way to yes. do that. We are um, thankful yes. that you are here. Yes, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for listening to us on this fine Sunday. Absolutely. Enjoy your family, and yes. we'll see you very, very soon. Yes, don't miss next week. Yes, we'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Bye. Have an awesome Sunday. We love you. <laughs>
it all in your hands. Church family, this morning we have the privilege of watching people be baptized this morning, making that public declaration, saying, yes, we believe that you are the God of the promise. Yes, we believe in your word. And yes, Father God, we surrender and give you our all. Would you just join me in paying attention and just watching this beautiful moment take place? accepted Jesus as your personal Savior. Based off your public confession, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior? Based off your public confession, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior? Based off your public confession, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior? Based off your public confession, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Based off your public confession, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit.
Have you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior? Yes, I have. Based off your public confession, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior? Based off your public confession, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Based off your public confession, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior? Yes. Based off your public confession, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Accepted Jesus as your personal Savior. Based off your public confession, I now baptize your name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Have you accepted Jesus as your personal Savior? Based off your public confession, I now baptize your name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Accepted Jesus as your personal Savior? Yes. Based off your public confession, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come on, give it up for him. Woo! It's so glorious. Come on, yeah, stand to your feet. Yes, we praise you, God. We praise you, we thank you. Hallelujah, I tell you, it is so exciting to see those families. I mean, it's so emotional, isn't it? Like when Frank is like, these are our kids. These are people that have just said, they went, they went from here to there. They took the jump, the leap of faith. Listen, water baptism, here's what's so awesome about it. It is a public declaration. It is a statement of faith saying, I'm going this way, and I'm leaving that behind. That's what water baptism is all about. Give him another round of applause. Yes. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing. And listen, we have a water baptism. Stay on your feet. We have a water baptism class coming up on uh, July 13th. It's a Wednesday night, 6 o'clock. So if you've been waiting, wait no more. It's time, and your whole family, it's so beautiful. So come and get water baptized. We'll explain it. You'll be prepared. It'll be awesome. So take a moment, turn around, and greet your neighbors really quickly. Welcome everybody to service. Welcome everybody online today. We're so glad you're with us and could take time out of your busy schedule. And we take a moment, take a praise break. Amen? This is our praise break. Woo! It's a time where we come together corporately and worship and just love on each other and get fueled up and fired up and ready to go out those doors. So as we take up our offering today, as we really come before him, you know, we get to give this small 10%, this, these small things. And in light of a video like this, I think, what is my problem with giving if you have one? It's so minute compared to the greatness of God and who he says that he is and how much we can trust him. So lean in to a God that you trust and believe in, who's for you, not against you, that you can rest in and trust in the most difficult of circumstances. Don't let it stop you from knowing him, loving him, serving him, giving to him, and having a vision for the future. 
He wants you to have it. He wants you to walk in it and live out your testimony. Because just like Sujo, what a testimony he has today. Amen? So let's pray. Father, we thank you so much. You are so good. I'm so grateful that your love is deeper than we understand deep, higher than we understand high. You never sleep. You never slumber. You're everywhere all at the same time. You are amazing, and we just trust you with this small act of faith and giving of our tithes and our offerings and giving into missions and sowing into the lives of others. Lord, we just thank you that we can. We thank you that you provide for us. We thank you that you own a cattle on a thousand hills, Lord, that you never sleep, you never slumber, you never lack in provision. You never lack in our future. You see it, you know it, and you give us help. You are our ever-present help in time of need. And everybody said, amen. amen. Hi guys, Benny here. I want to introduce you to this year's VBS Destination Dig. Yes, July 11th through 15th from 9 to 12 p.m. each day. We want you all kids to be here as we unearth and discover the truth about who Jesus is. Yes, it's gonna be an awesome time of worship, games, crafts, Bible story, human video, and so much more. Sign up today on our events tab. We can't wait to see you there. Christian Life Church is more than a building, it's a body. Diverse yet wound together like a fabric. But what if this church on 3100 Galloway Road had no walls and existed wherever you and I were willing to go? Because that's our mission, to celebrate faith, demonstrate love, and share the hope of Jesus. On July 25th to 29th, our church is mobilizing. Invite a friend, bring your family, or serve as a small group as we love on our community for our first Serve Week. Every day during Serve Week, we have opportunities to serve right here in our own backyard. Go to the website under the Events tab, pick a project, and register. Our prayer is to be a people rich in good works and leave a lasting impression of Christ wherever we go. We hope to serve with you. I love that we get the opportunity as a church to just reach out to our community and not just keep it here, not be selfish <laughs> with what we experience here, here, just being in the presence of God. Lord, I just, I pray right now as we continue to worship that you would just continue to do a work within us, Father God, that you would just open up our hearts, Lord, and reveal to us each and every one of us, what you have for us, Father God. I pray that you would meet each and every one of us where we are, Jesus. That we would be open to hearing from you, Father God. To receiving what you have for us, Lord. Open to your love, Jesus. Open to your peace, Lord. I pray right now that any wall that needs to be torn down, that it would come down at the mention of your name, Jesus, right now, before we even utter a word of praise to you, Father God, you are still working right now and still moving. So we thank you for that, Jesus. We lift up your mighty name today, Lord. Have your way. Let's take this moment right now to just invite the Holy Spirit to just have his way in your heart.
Same. 
prayer this morning.
impossible where the enemy says impossible you said believe and it will be possible what is impossible with men is possible with me that's what it says in your word and so God this morning we're lifting our hands not to a dead God not to an imagined God not a God that has been made up by the world but we serve the risen living Savior a kingdom that will never fail and God I love even the world I'm living in right now, I understand there's sin everywhere. I understand that things are happening in this world. But I also understand the Bible says where sin abounds, the grace of God abounds that much more. God, I believe that you're working in this world. It's evident that you're changing lives and miracles are happening. God, even in this service this morning, as I think about all the people that have gathered here, we are all trophies of your grace. God, if it were not for your grace, where would we be? God, if it were not for the miracle working power of the blood of Jesus on the cross, where would we be? And God, the thing that I love is that you've never lost that power. You'll still save people today. You'll still set people free today. You'll still deliver people today. You'll still put marriages back together today. You'll still bring a wayward child back home today. The rebellious heart they will find joy and find hope. God, because you're a miracle worker, that God let us remember what the scripture says. It says we have not because we ask not. God, so many times the reason we don't see the miracle in our own life is we've not even asked for it. God, may we believe and receive for our lives that miracle. God, here today, there have been people that walked in here, people that are joining us by way of live streaming. They need a miracle in their life. And it's a miracle the world cannot give them. The world is incapable of giving it to them. The systems of this world are incapable. But Jesus, you are capable. And we trust you this morning. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. God, may we, as we digest the word this morning, may it transform us. May it help us, God. God, I, I can preach the word. But God, there has to be an application to the word. The Bible says, don't only be hearers of the word, but be doers of the word. In other words, there has to be powers found in the doing. So God, empower your people to do. We're reminded of your last words, Jesus. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. Make disciples. God, we sit at your feet this morning and we learn from your word. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but your word will remain forever. Thank you, Jesus, for your word. Speak to us, Holy Spirit. Make us a little bit more like Jesus today. In your name we pray, Jesus. And all God's people said amen. Amen, amen. amen. Are you glad you're in church this morning? Come on, why don't you give a good hand? Those that are joining us by way of live streaming, we're so glad you're here. Welcome, 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 welcome. You may be seated where you're at. Amen. Wow, what incredible music. Man, I'm going to tell you, y'all are spoiled. Or maybe it's in the north that's spoiled. But either way, spoiled or spoiled, you just spoiled. What incredible music. Uh, thank you, Alex, and our worship team. Don't they do a wonderful job to lead us into the presence of the Lord? Hey, man. 
Now, some of you are sitting there, and I see you fanning. A little warm in here, isn't it? Yeah, a little warm. It's going to be a little warm for a while. We have three big 30-ton units on this building to heat this sanct- I mean, to cool this sanctuary, and two of them went down. All three of them have to be replaced. And they gave us a three to four month window to replace them. We got one working, so everybody needs to intercede this summer that the one stays healthy, that the one's working. And, uh, and, I, and the great thing about it is this summer I'll have plenty of opportunity to preach on hell. <laughs> and people will feel like it, especially on those hot days. But um, I told someone, I told the board, we were talking about this on Thursday. I said, well, the building is 23 years old. I said, it's time to replace those things. And uh, I said, we may have to go back and get the funeral home fans. Everybody know what funeral home fans are? If you grew up in a small church, you know what a funeral home fan is, especially if you grew up somewhere in the south where it was hot. Go to church, and they'd have those little fans right in front by the hymn book and by the Bible. And on the front of that fan... It would have a picture of a covered bridge or spring, and on the back it would say, sponsored by Whitehurst Funeral Home. Because you felt like you was going to die. And so I said, we may have to go back to funeral home fans for a while. But I know this, that even when it was hot, people shouted, it didn't matter. That Jesus was Jesus, whether you were hot or cold, Jesus was Jesus. So anyways, uh, the first service was cold. And you are warm. So... um, Listen, I want to mention two things to you very quickly. Men, this is your last Sunday to sign up for the missions trip to El Salvador in October. If you're going to sign up, you need to do it today. It will close after today. And uh, that team will, I mean, that team will be set to serve in El Salvador in October. So I encourage you, if you've never been a man, if you've never been a part of a missions trip, it's a great way for you to understand missions on the ground. Uh, Some things are better caught than taught. And um, sometimes getting there on the field, it just changes the way you think about the world. Here's the other thing I want to mention to you. Um, Unless you've just been living underground for the last week, you've watched what's happened in the news and some changes that have happened in our world. And I feel like I need to speak to those things. Uh, Specifically, what happened this past Friday with the Supreme Court's ruling with Roe v. Wade. And um, I, I want to I tell you this. I, I know that there are raw emotions on both sides, can be. Um, but I want you to know this. As a pastor and as a believer in Jesus Christ, I believe life is important. I believe God is the author and the giver of life. And I think the church, this is a, a moment for the church not to gloat but to roll up our sleeves and say, we're gonna foster, we're gonna adopt, we're gonna do whatever we have to do to come beside people and help people who are in need. You know, honestly, I believe that that's, and we know this from talking with people, people that find themselves in an unexpected place, women where they're, where they're pregnant, they, they don't feel like there's anyone there. We want them to know the church is there. We will help them through a difficult moment maybe that they didn't plan for. But I want you to understand this too as a church, all right? As a church, we must be people of truth. We must be people of truth. You see, it's the truth that sets people free. It, it, people say, well, you gotta be tolerant. I understand what people mean by that. You gotta love people. And we love people. We, as believers, you should love people. But there is love and there is truth and they work hand in hand. If you love someone, you will tell them the truth and it's the truth that sets people free. Now, we don't, we don't do this in a mean, spiteful way, but we live it before them. And let me just say this. If you're here and you say, well, pastor, people may not like me. They're not supposed to like you. Do you understand what the scripture says? Jesus said you will be like lamb or sheep led to the slaughter. You will be rejected because of me. We need to quit. Get, we need to get away from this that we want everybody to like us. What we should do is preach the truth and love people, and people may not love you back. Jesus still loves you. And live in such a way that you bring glory to the kingdom and not your own. Okay, it's not about self-preservation. It's about kingdom preservation. And so, listen, um, I'm, I'm very thankful that it was overturned. 
I'm, as a pastor, this is something I've prayed for my entire life since I've been saved, is that this would be overturned. Now, we know it's sent back to the state level. We get that. That it wasn't completely overturned. I have to tell you as a pastor, I'm praying for the day it's completely overturned. I, that's what I, and, and, and I know people will get mad at me saying that. I get, some people are watching, you're just mad at me for that. But I am for life. I have two adopted children. I have an adopted granddaughter. I believe in rescuing people that are hurting at their most difficult times that we can come alongside them and show them what Jesus looks in a real way that we are the hands and the feet of Jesus. So let's, this is one of the reasons we started Save One Ministry is, is to do this, to come alongside people that are hurting and struggling. Tell them that we love them and we can help them through this. I mean, believe that's a good thing and that's actually the church. Amen? Amen. So I want to get into God's word this morning. And, and you know, as believers, and even as an individual, I've thought about those that have gone before me. I've thought about my great-grandfather, and, and I've thought about my grandfather, and I've thought about my aunts and uncles that loved Jesus and that were planting churches. I think about my great-grandfather, Bud English, that, that planted and started churches in, in North Alabama and Georgia, and he all did it from horseback. That they were sharecroppers. My family was just sharecroppers. And um, basically, you had to work on this farm in order to live. And so they, would, they were sharecroppers, but on the weekend, they were, they were off. And so my great-grandfather had nine children. Nine children. My, my papa was one of those boys. There was three boys. And, um, and, and the rest were girls. And my grandfather, my papa, in the third grade, that was it for him for schooling. He had to quit at third grade, and they put him behind a plow. They cut the plow to his height as a third grader, and he plowed from daylight to, daylight to dark. And that's how he grew up. And we talk about a generation that understood sacrifice. That was a generation. And I think about my grandfather on those weekends where he would go off and he would preach. And I met a man years ago when I first got into ministry that actually knew my great-grandfather and knew my family. And, I, and I, my family knew him, so I knew this was a story that was true. He said, Mark, I, I knew your great-grandfather. And on the weekends when he would go and preach, that his wife, Savannah, who was an American Indian that he actually went on a reservation and was preaching on the reservations to Indians and they fell in love and got married. I know I don't look Indian, but I am. So he's traveling and he's preaching on weekends and all of the kids at home, Savannah and the kids at home, they would fast on the weekends while their dad preached. You talk about a spiritual heritage. You, you, you talk about something that will change one generation to the next. There are days that I walk in my office that I have a metal box. Some of you have heard me talk about this metal box. This metal box holds three by five cards and, and when I open it up, the, 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 the lid still sort of squeaks. And in that box, it's the most precious thing I have in my entire library, is every sermon my papa preached on a three by five card. A little typewriter taught himself how to read and write, all that. And he preached. Every moment he got, he preached. Run revivals, preach, preach. I'll open that up sometimes and pull out one card and just put it up next to my nose and smell it and go, I want what that guy had. They didn't care about the wealth of this world. All they cared about was Jesus and people falling in love with Jesus and eternities being changed. You see, that generation has spoken to my generation. And so they lived a life that outlasted. They, their, their life is still giving to this day. It's just like a tree that's in your yard. Big, we have big trees in our yard. Guess what? We didn't plant those trees. Someone else planted those trees. We just enjoy the benefit from them. Let me ask you this question. Are you living your life that way? Am I living my life that way, that it outlasts this current day? We just, we're sowing into the next generation, the next generation. 
This is what this word is about this morning. So Father, would you help us to live unselfishly, to live, God, we're living in a world right now that is hurting, God, that we're living in a world right now that, that needs help. And God, it, that help will not come from people that just occupy this church and that's it. But the help will come when we just don't go to church, when we become the church. That's when the help comes. You raised up the church for moments such as this, to live unselfishly, to speak to the next generation. So help us, Jesus. In your name we pray. Amen and amen. Listen to what the psalmist said. The psalmist says it this way. In Psalm 145 and verse 4, it says this. One generation will commend your works to another. They will tell of your mighty acts. Listen to what it says in the message translation. It says, generation after generation stands in all of your works. Each one tells stories of your mighty acts. Maybe you just need to underline that. Maybe in your Bible or if you're taking notes, that you'll underline that one word, story. Each one tells stories of your mighty acts. One generation, the next generation tells of those stories of your mighty acts. Let me ask you this. You have to experience something before you can tell it to others. Does that make sense? I know it's very elementary, but it's so true. You, there's no stories to tell if you've not experienced it. But if you're experiencing the mighty acts of the Lord on your life, guess what? You need to be telling it to your children. It's like in the Old Testament when the, when the Lord spoke through Moses and he said, you need to tell about me and tell people to write it on the door frames of their houses, put it everywhere. When they sit and when they eat, when they walk along the path, that they would tell about those mighty acts. You see, this scripture tells us that as we tell those mighty acts, it'll go from one generation to the next, to the next, to the next. There's some stories that I still remember my papa and mama telling me about. Stories that they didn't know where they were gonna get the next meal. And someone would show up and they would have a bag full of groceries. You see, those things just don't happen. That happens to people who live unselfish lives. You see, we, we think about those stories. I, I think about all the stories that have influenced my life from a previous generation. The question will be, what stories will my kids hear? And what stories will my grandkids hear? And what stories will my great-grandkids hear? You see, it all really comes down to the power of a seed. I've thought about this. I've thought about my life. I've thought about the lives of others. And all throughout the Bible, we see this analogy of a seed. Jesus talks about this in the parable of the sower. Listen to what he says in Matthew 13 and 3. He says, then he told them many things in parables, in other words, stories, saying, a farmer went out to sow seed. As he was scattering seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on the rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow, but when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still others fell, other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop, a hundred, a sixty, or thirty times what was sown. He was in the ear, let him hear. He was ears, let him hear. So he talks about, he talks about four uh, disbursements of seed and where they land. I was reading about this in Palestinian days that they would have these rows, much like what we have today. They would have rows where they plant, and then on the side, they called it common ground. So you may have a row where seed is planted, but then you have common ground on both sides where people can walk. And the reason they would call it common ground, because anyone could walk through your field. They could just take a shortcut, walk through your field, and they would walk it so much it would beat down the ground. And so when he, when, he, when he talks about this, and he talks about the seed being scattered. Now, many theologians believe that if you look at this story, what was happening was Jesus was about to preach to them, but the crowds became so much, he got out on a boat and he began to preach from the boat. And during that time, that would have been an area where there was a field. 
and possibly a farmer going out to sow seed. And so he would be using this as an analogy, as a story, as a parable. And so the idea was this farmer, there's two ways you could plant seeds. You could plant seeds by throwing the seed just in the row. You could throw the seed. Or one way you could do it, which was probably the lazier way, you would attach it to a donkey, attach the bag full of seed and cut a little hole, slit a little hole, and walk the donkey down the path where the seed could be scattered. This is talking about when, when the, he's throwing the seed because wind could blow that seed. And so he talks about these four types of soil on the path, the rocky place, the thorns, and the good soil. But it all started with a seed. A seed. You see, a farmer plants in faith. I, I want you to think about this. Every seed that a farmer plants, he plants in faith. He's believing that there's going to be a crop. He does not plant seeds thinking, well, we're not going to get anything this year. He plants. Even when you plant, if you have a garden, when you take that packet of cucumber seeds and you see those cucumbers on the outside, when you plant the seed, all you're thinking about is that picture. This is what it's going to look like. It's going to look like this right here. When you plant tomatoes, you're going to be, boy, it's going to look just like this. Or whatever you're planting, you're planting in faith. In other words, you're already seeing the harvest before you even receive a harvest. Now that's faith, Amen. is when you plant that way. In essence, a farmer is planting seeds of faith. For my life to outlast me, I must continue to plant that way. Then I'm gonna plant believing that it may not affect me, but it may affect the next generation. In the next couple of months, over the next year actually, um, we're gonna roll out a new children's facility here at Christian Life Church. Now, some of you, you don't have children, but I'm gonna ask you to give to that anyways. I'm gonna ask you to plant seeds. You know why? Because I look at what's happening in this world right now. Did you know this? What's happening in this world, they're not after me. I know what I believe. They're not gonna get me. They're not gonna turn me. I know what I believe. I've been a disciple of Jesus for the last 34 years. They're not going to turn me. But you know they're after? They're after my kids. They're after the kids of this world. This is the reason we need to build something where our kids come in. And Pastor Robin's doing an incredible job. But how many of you know that our kids can be still spirit-filled, called into the ministry, and work in the giftings of the spirit? You see, I want you to know this. That even this past week, I had a dad come in and tell me, Say, Pastor, and we had our youth was off at youth camp last week. Let me tell you something. Get your kids at youth camp. Man, these, these week-long experiences are spiritual encounters. Your kid. I'll never forget the youth camp side. We were talking about it this past week. Youth camps and how, how, how youth camp just impacted our life. Well, this dad came in this morning. And he goes, my son went to youth camp. And he just sort of teary-eyed. And he came to my office. And this leader in this church, he said, my boy came back from youth camp. He was filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit and felt called to ministry. Let me tell you, this is what needs to happen to our kids. They don't need to be indoctrinated in the world. They need to be full of God's Spirit that they have discernment because we can't take them out of the world, but we can empower them to live in the world as believers. And man, when I heard that, I was like, man, we need to get more kids at youth camp. Pastor Robin's going to be taking kids off to kids' camp. You know what I'm praying? Those kids get so full of God's spirit. I, I, I believe, you want me to tell you what the most incredible testimony. Now, every testimony is great because God saves us. But can I tell you a testimony that's great? Let a kid get saved at seven or eight years old and they never turn their back on Jesus. Now, that's a testimony. That's a testimony that a kid... God can keep them all their years. Let me tell you something. Your child doesn't need to go off and be rebellious to understand that there's a good way. God can keep them their whole life. They've got to be a better man than that. God can keep them. But it starts with a seed. You see, I think the question, when we look at this, this is God as the farmer and he's casting seed. But what if I flip the parable around and I ask, what are you and I planning? Not what he's doing. What are we planning? Because there has to be a practical application. Christian and I were talking about this. 
Years ago, I remember hearing the gospel, the preaching of the gospel, even as a kid. If you remember a lot of the preaching many, many years ago, we were hearing a lot of good theology, but there was no practical application. There has to be the application. This is where Jesus' parable was actually the application. It was giving them a modern-day story that they could understand. So the question for all of us is, what are you and I planning? If I'm going to live a life that speaks to the next generation, this is the first question I have to ask is, what am I planning? Because every moment, every action, I'm planning something. I am planning either doubt in my children or in my life, or I'm planning hope. You see, every action, every moment, I'm planning something. And when I think about it, all these seeds that I'm planting, they have power and potential. The idea of a seed, when I open up a packet of seeds, I'm opening up potential. Why? Because there's life in seed. You see, if I take a seed and I take a rock, there's a big difference. And follow me on this. If I plant a seed, there's power and life in that seed. If I plant a rock, it's just a rock. I can plant a rock, and I can cover it with soil, and I can give it miracle grow, and I can pull weeds, and I can do everything that I'm supposed to do in order to grow a plant, but guess what? Nothing's coming up. It's a rock. You know why? Because a rock has no life. Can I tell you, there's a lot of people planting rocks. They're not planting seeds. And you know what rocks looks like? Rocks looks like this. My bank account sure is big. Boy, my house, my car, all these kind of, we, if we're not careful, we'll, get, we'll plant more rocks than we will seeds, and there's nothing life-giving in a rock. We, yes, we can have a big bank account. We can have a big achievement. We can have big goals. We can have a big reputation, and people look at our lives, and they're impressed. But if I only bury a rock in the ground, I'll never see it again. That's it. I had a person one time, we were having a discussion, and Sarah was going off to school, or our oldest was going off to school, and um, she decided to go to one of our universities, and it was very expensive, and, and I just, I wasn't prepared to send her to that expensive of a school, and yet I knew that she would grow at this place. So we started thinking, Christian and I started thinking, what can we do? What do we have to help her in this? And so I cashed out my retirement. This person told me, he said, that's the stupidest thing you've ever done. You would, you would risk your future. And I said, go ahead and say it. The greatest treasure I have besides my wife or my kids and if I don't believe in them, you see, the world doesn't believe in my children like I do. It's my greatest treasure. So let's just follow this. I decide, nope, not, you're not going to school. I'm not going to do everything I can. If I don't do that, and let's say that I get 75 years old, and I got plenty of money in the bank, I got a paid off house. But my kids are struggling to know who God is. I planted rocks. I planted rocks. Folks, the goal of this life is not to have more money when you retire so you can go to Florida and play shuffleboard. That's not the goal of this life. The goal of this life is to make sure the people closest to you and the people around you know who Jesus is and they're in eternity with you. That's the goal of this life. Some people may say, Pastor, how do I know if what I'm planning has life? Well, the way you do that is you determine, is it a selfish seed or an unselfish seed? Very easy to determine. If I'm planting unselfish seeds, that's life. Listen to what, listen to what it says in the book of John chapter 12. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains only a single seed. But if it dies, it produces many seeds. 
It produces many seeds. Think about Jesus on the cross was a type of a seed. Okay? He was crucified on the cross, put in the tomb. He was buried, but he came to life. He came to life. Can I tell you, this is an example of baptism. Is that you're buried with Christ. Nevertheless, he lives in me. And you come up a new life. That's the example of it, that I'm dying to self and living. Did, how many of you got charged up by baptisms? I, I, I'm telling you, it got, we, listen, it got thick up there. I, we had three entire families, that their kids, and they got baptized, the entire family. I mean, I was in the baptism pool, and I just wanted to yell every time, take that devil. Take that devil. I, I, I just, there's something in me when I see lives that are transformed like that, I'm thinking, Jesus, you're still greater than the demonic presence of this world. And you're still setting people free. And so we see this example of dying to self and living. And that's how you can determine if you're planting good seeds or not. Is it selfish seed? Or an unselfish seed. And there are two things. When I say to plant in things that will last forever, I always say this. There's two things that will last forever. Two things. If you want to plant seeds, two things. God's word, people. It's only two things that are going to last forever. is God's word or people. Listen to what it says here. It says in Isaiah 40, the grass withers and the flowers fall, but the word of God stands forever. Matthew 24, 35 says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. The word of God. This is the reason we build our life. This is the reason you're here this morning is to build your life on something that will never fade away, that will last forever, that you can build. We live in a world that one minute they're changing and the next minute they're there and the next minute they're here. What was right 40 years ago is now wrong. And what is wrong and now right. God's word never changes. It's constant. It's an anchor for our soul. This is the reason we invest in fire Bible so heavily in the translation of God's word into the heart language of people. This past week, I was with Jeff Dove, the president of fire Bible. We had our board meeting. And I want you to watch this video of just this interview with Jeff. Hey, guys. I'm here with uh, Jeff Dove, the president of Bible Alliance, or we know it as fire Bible. Many of you use your fire Bible in your daily study, daily devotion. Many of you have picked up copies from even in our cafe here. And we've been able to really touch a lot of people around the world in so many different heart languages. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jeff and I have been talking about this over the last couple days. Uh, there's always some additions that we just need a little bit more to get it over the line, to finish up the project, get it in the hands of people. And so we were talking about some of the different Indian translations we've been involved in, but specifically two right now that we need to finish up with. Tell us a little bit about those. Okay. Greetings, church. We uh, are just trying to get as many languages in the Indian context finished as possible. If I ran through a list, you would know many of them. Hindi and Tamil and Telugu and Punjab. We've done all these languages, and now we've come all the way down to where we're finishing the Kannada language and the Gujarat language. Both of these have tens of millions of speakers. This is their heart language, and they need a fire Bible. They need these notes, these articles, these book introductions in their own heart language, and we are this close to finishing it. Wow. All we lack is some more funds. Yeah. We're not gonna let that stop us. God's gonna provide. I think mm -hmm. this video will help us do just that. Yeah. yeah, so tell us, Jeff, in both of those languages, what would it take to finish up both of those languages? Both of those languages, you know, they run about 500 to 550 a piece. So you're looking at a million dollars for two Bibles. Wow. And we have raised significant funds, but due to COVID and some other things, we're still behind. We probably need about two and a quarter to $250,000 to finish Canada, mm -hmm. or Canada. And we need about 125 to 150 to finish the Gujarat language fire Bible. Wow, wow. And I'm gonna tell you, the amazing thing is, Jeff, how many languages now have we translated the fire Bible, fire Bible in their heart language? Oh, we, we're going to dedicate in October our 62nd, 63rd. In September, we'll be 64 in Polish. Later on in the year, we're going to be at, in Sri Lanka for that great language in Singhalese. Wow. And we're just, we're chasing the top 100 languages on the planet 
And we believe by the end of next year, we'll be at 70 to 72 languages finished. Amazing. Yes, it's Amazing. incredible. Guys, and we get to be a part of this. Uh, you've heard me say this. I believe that one church can make a difference in the mm-hmm. world. Mm-hmm. I just believe that. And we're a local church that's globally impacting the world. And we have incredible partners like Fire Bible that, listen, we're an active part of this. And, mm-hmm. and I want you to pray about how you can help us finish up these two languages. Guys, let's just go ahead and finish this up Amen. so we can jump on other projects. Because that's usually what happens. People get excited up front. They're working on a project. And then we have a little bit more left at the end. Let's just go ahead and finish this train, build it, get it on the tracks, and get the Bible into people's hands. Thank you so much Amen. for loving the world. Two things will be left at the end of time. People and the Word of God. Amen. And we're a part of that. Thank you so much. Thank you, church. So, by faith, we're moving on these translations. We're still doing it. And in the middle of November, on November 15th, I'll be going to India to dedicate one of those Bibles and to launch it into the church. We believe this. God's Word changes people. And when you give to Fire Bible, this after first service, I walked by the cafe and I saw people buying Fire Bible. When you buy Fire Bible, guess what happens? Fire Bible, Bible Alliance makes money off that. Then we can translate it into different languages. As you give, we're able to translate into different languages. And people are hearing the word of God. There's nothing greater than that because that changes the character of man. It changes their eternity. And see, it's when we plant those selfless seeds. Sure, could you use your money to do other things? Yeah. I mean, you could use your money. But what about when you give to God's word? That's, see, that's a selfless seed. I really believe that. And I was, we heard a story this past week from Jeff that I loved. It was about a lady. She was in a service much like this, and, and she wanted to give to missions. She, she desperately wanted to give to missions, but she was a single mom. Her kids had grown up, and they're gone. And she's a single lady. She's on a fixed income. And really doesn't have extra money to give to missions. But she wants to give to missions. And so you know what she did? It's a true story. She put a sign in her front yard that says, I will wash and iron your clothes. Put it in her front yard. She would work all day and come home and people would have clothes for her to wash. And they would say, how much, how much do we, should, we, should we give you for this? And she said, whatever the Lord tells you. For years and years in the evening, when she could have been sitting watching TV or reading a book, she was washing clothes and she was ironing clothes, collecting money, and for years and years and years, she gave every bit of that money to missions. You see, how many of you believe that's a selfless seed? How many of you believe that that's speaking to the next generation, that there's a daughter or there's a son out there that says, I'm going to be just like mom. I'm going to selflessly live my life. You see, it's people and it's the word of God that will last. But here's the second question we have to ask ourselves. is not, what am I planting, but where am I planting? Where am I planting? I can plant seed, but I got to make sure it's in good soil. And this parable speaks of souls or types of souls. The first one he, he speaks of is the callous life. If we had to just talk about callous life, the callous life, listen to what it is. When anyone hears, Matthew 13, 19 says, when anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is a seed that's sown along the path. Many of us understand what this is because before we got saved, maybe we were in church and we would hear the pastor preach and he was throwing seed like crazy, but you're like, I'm not ready for this. I, I, I'm not ready. For, I don't understand it. I'm not ready for it. This is what he's talking about first is a callous life. And if we're not careful... Ready? If we're not careful, we can be in church our whole life and say, oh, I've heard this before. And we just get calloused, even sitting in a church pew. A heart become calloused. That's what he's talking about here. Here's the second thing he talks about, the comfortable life. Not only the callous life, but the comfortable life. Someone who's committed their life to Christ, but they're not growing their roots deep. And this is what he's talking about along the rocky paths. And what he was saying is no farmer would just throw seeds on the rock. But the rock would be barely beneath the surface. And so the, the seed would germinate very quickly because the soil was warm. 
but it didn't have deep roots. And so when the sun came up, it would scorch it and it would die. See, the, the comfortable life, when, when problems come, sometimes their roots aren't deep. And I've watched this happen in church that people, man, they say, man, I'm going to be committed to serving Jesus. I'm going to be committed to serving Jesus. And they're really excited, but they don't get discipled. And the roots don't get deep and problems come and all of a sudden you don't see them in church anymore. And guess who they blame? The Lord. And this is what he's talking about. Here's the, here's the third life he talks about is the crowded life. So he's talking about the callous life, the comfortable life. Now he gets to the crowded life. Listen to what it says in Matthew 13, 22. The one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is a man who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it out, making it unfruitful. In other words, we allow things into our life that are not fruitful. It's just choking out what God can do. You, you know, can I tell you, I, I knew a couple that they moved away because they could move away, and they were in a great church, and they were thriving and growing, and they moved away because they had, a, they had an offer on the table where they could make more money. Well, see, if you're not careful, you go, man, the Lord's provided this for them, but you need to discern, you need to have discernment, okay? Because they left, and they didn't think about a church. And so they got there, and guess what? They went from church to church to church to church until finally they weren't in church. Now, do you think it was God's will for them to go for more money and yet miss eternity. What well, God's will. You see, but our life can become crowded if we're not careful. We allow things in our life and then we wonder why the word of God is not growing in us. And then he uses this last one, the complete life. Listen to what it says in verse 22. But the one who received the seed that fell on good soil is the man who hears the word, understands it. He produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. What's good soul? You say, Pastor, what's good soul? Allowing, investing your life with Jesus is good soul. Investing your life in the church is good soul. People say, Pastor, can I still be a Christian and not go to church? This is what I would tell you. You ready? You can be a Christian because Christ saves you. But I've never met anyone who wasn't in church that was growing in their faith. They're not a growing Christian. Does that make sense? See, because iron sharpens iron. We're around each other, and we help one another, and we have blind spots, and we need people around us. You see, when you plant your life with Jesus and you plant your life with the church. You see, some people say, well, I like church. I, I just don't like the people. The problem is the Bible says the church is the body of Christ. We're the body of Christ. It, some of you have heard me use this analogy before. Remember it's saying that we're the body of Christ. That's like someone saying, well, I don't like church. I, I, I love Jesus, but I don't like church. I don't like the people. That would be like, okay, if you said, Pastor, I, I love you. you, I just love you, I love hearing you, but I can't stand your wife. <laughs> Do you know what I would say right then? Well, then me and you never be friends. Me and you, because I don't work that way. When people, when people say, I love Jesus, but I don't like the church, that's exactly what you're saying. We are the body of Christ, warts and all. And we need each other. Plant your life with Jesus and with the people of God. You see, the only organization that can change the world is the church. Period. Period. You see, what am I planning? Where am I planning? But here's the last question. Why am I planning? Listen to what it says in the book of Galatians. In Galatians chapter 6, why am I planting? Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. That's why we sow good seeds. It's because we want eternal life. We want life. We want hope in our life. We want peace in our life. We want strength in our life. 
Remember when Jesus is talking about, he's talking about this whole idea of, of judging. Because a lot of people say, well, you shouldn't judge. Well, first of all, that's not biblical theology. All right? Um, the, the Bible's very clear about judgment. As believers, we hold each other accountable. As believers, you should judge one another. You, the Bible says you'll know them by the fruit they bear. Well, how can you know the fruit they bear by not judging the fruit? Well, you got to look at the fruit and go, well, that's bad fruit. That's good fruit. Why is that bad fruit? Because something's wrong. I mean, it's common sense to me. Listen, the Bible's not hard. Okay? But here's the thing. An unbeliever, I don't have to judge an unbeliever. The Bible says their sin judges them. I'm, so I don't have to do that. I am called to love them. Okay, that doesn't mean I, uh, acceptance and approval are two different things. Okay? So Jesus is talking about this, and listen to what he says. In Luke chapter 6 and 38, he says, remember the idea, he's talking about judgment here. He says, give and it will be given unto you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, will, you, will it be poured into your lap? For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Let me just say it this way. If you measure out seed, he'll give you more seed. If you measure out grace, you get more grace back to you. If you measure out love, you get more love back to you. I love what the Bible says. Are you ready? The Bible says, remember I'm talking about planting seed. I'm talking about planting good seed. I'm talking about planting the unselfish seed. Remember what the scripture says? He gives seed to the sower. He doesn't give seed to the one who isn't sowing. If you try to hide that seed in your pocket and you never give it, that's all you're going to have. That's all you're going to have. And once that seed's gone, it's gone. But he says, if you're sowing, if you're sowing, and you're throwing that seed out, every time you reach in your pouch, there'll be more seed. He gives seed to the sower. You know why? It's an unselfish seed. And let me tell you, that will speak to the next generation and the next generation and the next generation and the next generation. See, I want my kids to know this. And some of you know this. I want my kids to know that I followed the voice of the Lord. I want my kids to know where I could have stayed in Florida and pastored a church that I was already there for 24 years and could have stayed there the rest of my life and been comfortable, a comfortable life. I could, have, I could have had all that. And we had built our dream home. Our parents lived in that. Christy's mom's up, but she's leaving on Tuesday. I mean, we could have had them right beside. All those things we could have had. But I'd rather my kids know that my dad and mom heard the voice of the Lord. And despite all of the comfort, they said, God's got something new for us. And you know what I found out? Is when you step out not even knowing but you know it's the voice of God. You'll feel the blessings on your life. You'll feel the blessings. And can I tell you, can I tell you, I am more blessed here than I was there. And it, but it takes, it takes, it takes the seed of faith. It takes that you're going to plant seed, the unselfish seed. See, what are you holding on to right now? Because if you hold on to it too tightly, guess what will happen? You'll plant rocks. You'll plant rocks and you'll wonder, why is anything growing? Let me just say this. Are you ready? Here's another. Let's just take it a step further. If you planted seeds and you've already had a harvest off those seeds, quit looking at that plant to say, give me more. You sow more seed. A farmer doesn't go back year after year and pick from the same plant. He tills it under and throws more seed. That's what he does. Quit looking at what you did 10 years ago and saying, why am I not reaping anything? Because you've shut your pocket. Go back out and, and throw seed and God will do something in your life. Live your life in such a way that speaks to the next generation. And you know what will happen? Somebody will get up underneath that tree one day, that spiritual tree, and they'll say, man, somebody planted that. Do you know this? You're sitting in a sanctuary right now that many of you in here, you never gave a dime to it. That's not a bad thing. You didn't give to the building of this building. But yet you're enjoying the benefit of it. Those people, many of those people are dead and gone. Do you want you to think about that? You're enjoying all of that, their fruit. 
you're enjoying even today. What are we going to do for the next generation? Because I'm telling you, this generation is under attack. And it's all out attack. You want me to tell you why? I think the devil knows his days are numbered now. Amen? Lord, would you help us? God, would you help us to live in such a way that we bring glory to you, that we're planting these unselfish seeds, God. We're planting seeds that will last. God, so many times we can get caught up in our own life that we forget it's not about us. I'm saved. I'm on my way to heaven. I know that. But God, what about the people around me? Am I living in such a way that they want what I have? And that will provide seed for them. The Bible says if we have the ability to do good and we don't, it's a sin. God, let us examine our own lives. This afternoon, tomorrow, this week, we examine our lives and we ask, where am I planting? What am I planting? And why am I planting it? You know, as we, as we bow our heads this morning, the greatest seed that was ever planted with this was the seed of redemption. It's when Jesus came to this world. And it was a struggle to plant that seed. We know this because Jesus was in the garden. And he said, Father, if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, as you will. That even there was this internal struggle that Jesus had, but he submitted to the will of the Father. And because he submitted to the will of the Father, you and I have life today because that seed experienced death, but it experienced resurrection too. That's what a seed does. And maybe you're just, maybe your life, you look at your life as a seed. Remember what the word says in the book of John? Unless it dies. In other words, you die to self Unless you die to self, you're never going to find life. You're just not. And, and, and I don't mean to, that's not a, that's not a harsh word to you. That's, that's just telling the truth to you. And maybe you're here this morning and you've been living your life and it, your life's been pretty comfortable. And maybe, maybe you've lived your life in such a way that it really is calloused to the things of God. But this morning... The Spirit has spoken to you. In other words, God's Spirit. Maybe as I was preaching, you thought, man, that's me. And you just know that you need Jesus. Maybe you walked into this place and you said, I know I need Jesus. If you're watching me by live streaming, you're saying, I know I need Jesus. Well, can I tell you, if you'll just call on him, he'll answer you. So you may know that you need Jesus, but will you ask him to be your Lord and Savior? Romans 10, 9 and 10 says, if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Maybe you're hearing you say, Pastor, that's where I'm at. I just need Jesus. That doesn't mean you're a bad person. It just means you need, you come to the place in your life, you realize that this isn't working, and you need Jesus for your life. And right there where you're at, you'll just raise your hand and say, Pastor, that's me. Would you pray for me? Just pray for me, Pastor. That's me. I need Jesus, yes. Anybody else that will lift their hand? Thank you, yes. Yep. Yep, in the back, yeah. Anybody else here in the middle? Anybody here in the middle, you'd say, Pastor, that's me. Would you just pray for me? Anybody? Over off to my right. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Anybody else, you'd just say, Pastor, that's me. Yep, right here in the middle, I see that. So this is the second question I want to ask, because this deals with all of us in here, especially if you've asked Jesus into your life. Right now, you feel like your life is being crowded. And what I mean by that is a lot of voices, a lot of temptations, maybe there's work pressure, and maybe there's family pressure, and you just feel like everything's just sort of crowding in. And you don't feel like it's very productive. Doesn't mean you're not saved, but you're just fighting this and you just feel really crowded right now. You feel like that somehow these thorns are coming up. 
and you just need God to help you in this. Say, Pastor, would you pray for me? I've got some decisions to make, and I feel pretty crowded right now. Yeah, yeah. See, I've been there, friend. And you want me to tell you what my crowded looked like even in ministry? Is that you're doing a lot of good things, but you're not doing the things that God wants you to do. See, you can do a lot of good things and still miss the great things that God wants you to do. You know what that is? That's a crowded life. I want us to stand this morning and I'll invite my prayer partners to come to the front. Friend, we always close our service with prayer because the Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous person availeth much. In other words, much has changed. The Bible says pray one for another that you may be healed. And maybe you're here this morning and, and you need healing in your, in your heart. You need healing in your emotions. You just need healing. And friend, if you walk out of here and you say, I've got this, you don't. Because if you, if you had it, you would already be better. See, nobody on purpose says, I just want to feel pain. We think we can handle it. And there have been times where I just said, you know what, God? This, this is your battle. I'm just going to sort of take my hands off. And can I tell you, this comes through many years of being a disciple. The longer I'm alive, the more I just turn things over to the Lord. I go, Lord, this is, not, this is, this is you. The, the, longer I'm, the more I walk with him, the more I understand I can trust him. And that he will help you. But you've got to come to him. Remember what he says, come to me, all you who are weary. Have you, how many have been weary in here before? He said, come to me if you're weary, and you carry these heavy burdens, and I'll give you rest. How many won't rest? I mean, listen, we're in a world where there's a struggle. You need rest. So if you need prayer this morning, if you lift your hand for salvation, you lift your hand, I have a crowded life, or you just said, Pastor, I need prayer. We want to pray with you this morning. Listen. I'm going to pray, and I'm just going to lead us in a prayer this morning. And after that prayer, if you feel like you need to leave, you can leave, because we won't formally dismiss. But those that come to the altar, we want to leave the altar open. If you feel like you need to talk, please just do it out in the foyer, because it will allow people to pray around the front and not be distracted. How many, how many of you are going to walk out of here and say, Pastor, I'm going to examine the seed that I have. And I'm going to see if I'm planting this in a good place or a bad place. I'm going to examine my life and see where I've been casting seed. Because I want to make sure I'm casting it where it will come up 160, 30 fold. Amen? Come on, let's lift our hands to the Lord. Father, we love you. God, we thank you for your word. It is, it is life to us. And God, even, God, I, God, over the years, I've used this scripture many times. I've heard this scripture preached many times, but every time that I hear this, I ask myself this question, where am I planting my life right now? Am I, is my life, am I casting seed on good soil? Am I allowing the, your seed to fall on my life? Or am I allowing my life to be crowded? Have I gotten callous to the things of God? God, I, I, I believe this, one of the greatest dangers of a believer is the longer they're saved, one of the greatest dangers is they become callous to the things of God. God, if that's where we're at, forgive us. Renew us afresh and anew, God. God, I pray for those who lifted their hands. God, give them the courage to trust you with their life. The Bible says this, he who the Son sets free is free indeed. You came to bring us freedom. God, we pray that we would take this word now and we would run with it. We would run the race that is marked out for us and we would cast seed wherever we go. Good seed and good soul, Jesus. We love you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you how you've changed people in this place and you'll continue to do it. In Jesus' name, all God's people said amen. Listen, if you need prayer right now, I want you to step out. We are here to pray with you this morning. Come on, many of you lifted your hands. This is time for prayer.